Hi everyone, uh, welcome to our 11th lecture. In this lecture, we're gonna be studying uh, productivity software. And uh, uh, in particular, we're gonna be studying word processors, okay? So um, what is productivity software, also known as uh, office software, okay? Uh, basically, it's any software that makes an office run better. All right. So it's not any one particular program. It's actually usually called a suite. It's a series of programs which work with one another. All right. Now, most of you have some productivity software already on your computer. You might have the Microsoft Office suite, OK, uh, the home version. And uh, it's made up of um, several programs. You'll have a word processor in there, and that's uh, what we'll do in this lecture. All right. Uh, you'll probably have a spreadsheet program and we'll study that uh, next lecture. And uh, you probably have some kind of presentation software that's like PowerPoint. That's like for making slides so you can present something at a, during a meeting or something like that. And uh, I won't, we won't study that. It's very simple and most people can figure this out. And I don't really don't want to waste your time showing you a lot of trivial stuff. So we won't uh, look at that. Uh, and then there's uh, usually a databasing program, like in the Microsoft Office, there's Access, okay? Now, the home version of that usually doesn't have Access, all right? And um, the reason is, is that Access, this databasing program, is the center. It's the most important part of any Office software. It's like where all the data is, okay? Now, we will study that. And um, I will uh, develop a database for you, okay? But I won't expect you to develop databases. I just want to give you enough so you understand why databases are incredibly important for Office software, all right? But, um, you know, uh, there are entire courses that are uh, dedicated to uh, designing databases. In fact, there's entire uh, IT programs uh, dedicated to designing databases. So, I mean, that's far beyond the scope of this course. It's more important that you understand what it is. But as I was saying, if you have the home edition of um, the Microsoft Office suite, you're not going to have access. OK, uh, the business edition does, but that's about five hundred dollars. OK, whereas the home edition is, is much cheaper. All right. And so, um, you know, that's enough for uh, most people at home. But if you really were running an office, you'd want a place to put all your data, like all your customer information, all your product information, you know, all that kind of stuff. Or if you're if you're a college, you'd want a place to put all the student names, all the transcripts, all the like financial aid information, all that kind of information that goes into this databasing program. OK, so all of this software, this suite of software, this set of programs, they all work with one another and they're all kind of glued together by this central databasing program. Okay, so let's go through them again. There's the word processor, which we'll study today. Okay, and that's just basically for formatting uh, text, okay, like writing letters or things like that. And I, everyone's used that because that's how you write your papers. All right, and there's not much for me to say, but I will, you know, there's enough that I can can teach you uh, on word processors, uh, stuff that you probably don't know. Spreadsheets, that takes a little bit more, okay? Um, most people, you could put them in front of a word processor and they'll figure it out on their own. But a spreadsheet, no, nah, you wouldn't, uh, you know, unless you really put a lot of effort into it or you re watch a lot of training videos, um, you're not going to be able to figure out how to uh, work a stretch spreadsheet and, and uh, you know, make it useful. OK, so that's actually the subject of uh, the next lecture. And uh, we will go through how to use uh, spreadsheets. Not everything they can do, because, again, you could have an entire course on that, but just enough so that you're, you know, you're proficient at it and you could use it, you know, for your schoolwork. OK, uh, as I said, we're not I'm not going to show you the presentation program and I'm going to show you this databasing program like it's power, not so much expecting you to actually uh, design databases and so on. OK, so there you go. Uh, there's probably more programs in these office uh, suites, but those are the, the critical ones. OK, now the way I'm going to teach this is I'm not going to use any particular word process or any particular suite. OK, productivity suite. Uh, what I'm going to do is I, uh, I'm going to give you a bigger picture for what they do and just show you the kinds of features that they have. OK, now the reason for doing that is if I start to get into like, you know, where do you click to do things? Uh, it's going to drive you crazy in terms of how boring it is. All right. And there are training videos out there and, um, you know, you could watch them. They're on YouTube and, you know, you can Google for them and so on. And so if there's a particular thing that you need to do and you don't know how to do that, like, for example, how to format a table nicely in um, in Microsoft Word, you, you can Google for that. OK, and you'll find videos for that. But if I were to show you that and then I showed you another thing and another thing, it's just incredibly boring. So the way to approach this is not so much to know where do you click to do something, but just what can these programs do for you? OK, like what do they do? What kind of features do they give you rather than the details of those features? OK, for most of these things, you'll be able to figure it out. If you just know that the word processor can make a word bold, you go, well, I want to make this word 
bold. Okay. And then you go, you know, hunting and pecking for like whatever is going to, you know, make a word bold, you know, what button do you press, that kind of thing. All right. Uh, so that's the way to do it. Just know what these um, programs can do for you, know what features they provide, and then try to find what those features are. If it's something complicated, like, I don't know, you're using a spreadsheet and you have to do a pivot table in a spreadsheet. And, and that's a pretty sophisticated thing, you know, uh, to do, or you have to do some complicated statistical analysis with a spreadsheet for some class. And you go, well, I, I kind of know that it can do that. And I know that there are these functions in there. Like, where do I go for that? Well, then maybe you could just get on YouTube and you could go, uh, you know, Microsoft Excel pivot tables and a whole bunch of videos come up and then you can watch them all right but if you try to watch you know uh, these hour-long training videos and there are these training videos out there it would just bore you to tears so I'm not going to teach like that you'll, you'll see how I teach you know uh, as I go through this I'm just going to tell you the features that are there I'm going to demonstrate the features and you know the features and on the test I'm not going to like ask any of the details of like where do you click to get that feature okay uh, because that's that's just that's trivial okay now um, you know, uh, let's start off with this word processor and let's understand it in terms of this databasing program. So uh, what a word processor is, is it's basically just a program which formats text. And that sounds kind of trivial, okay? Like what you're seeing right now, like the, this text right here in the background, you're actually not seeing a word processor, you're seeing a text editor. And what a text editor is, is it just basically works with ASCII, okay, or plain text, or maybe Unicode. So maybe I could put some Chinese characters in there. But I, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't highlight something later. Like I, I can't highlight, you know, word processor there like that, and then click a button and make it bold. Okay, text editors don't do that. They just work with ASCII and ASCII is just the letters, not the style of the letters, not the size of the letters, nothing else. Just, you know, like this is the letter W. All right. We, we saw that earlier in the course. All right. So uh, word processors are more than that. They will, you know, make letters fancy. They'll make some text big. They'll center text. They'll make it look, you know, the whole text. Uh, all the writing look very pretty on the page so that it's presentable uh, to, you know, your colleagues at work or it's presentable to a journal or it's presentable as a as a, a thesis, you know, um, and so on. OK, for dissertation and so on. So um, th that sounds like it's pretty important, but it's actually much more than that. Word processors are even more than that. OK, and so uh, I'm going to come back to word processors again when we do the databasing program. And here's why, because uh, the database has like, say, all customer information. Now, um, word processors are based off of the idea of typewriters, the ancient typewriters back in the day, you know, when secretaries would sit at a desk and they would have these mechanical machines and there would be like these, you know, you press a W, the key, W key, and it would, you know, slam a hammer into like a, a ribbon of ink and then onto the, the paper and it would draw a W there. And I mean, you know, that's how they did things. If you made a mistake, you'd have to, you know, rub off the letter and then type it again. Okay. And you can imagine now if you're a company and you have to send out a hundred letters or even a thousand letters, it's not unusual, a thousand letters to your customers. Okay. And your letters start off, dear so-and-so, you want to actually put the name of the person at the top. Okay. Well, you know, you could say dear customer, but that's not personalized. Now you want to say dear so-and-so, and it's going to be a different name, you know, dear Mr. Joan, uh, dear Miss uh, Smith, and, and so on and so forth. You're going to have all the different names in there. And you go, well, do I have to type a thousand different letters for that? And the answer is no, you don't. All you have to do is type one letter, which is like the template of all of your letters. Okay. So, you know, you just type the letter and then where you would put the first name and the last name, you put a first name field. Okay. It's kind of like a blank space. And it says to the word processor, when you get to this point, put the first name in here. Okay. And then there's a last name field and that's where the last name goes and so on. Okay. So you don't really write a, uh, all the letters. You just write the template for the letters and the changeable part of the letters. Those are the fields. And then you say, well, how do I fill in those fields? You tell the word processor, go to the database and get all the customer names and then take that one template and apply it to all 1000 customers. Okay. And I think you can see why this is a, a, a tremendous advantage. Like, there's a lot of productivity there. That's why it's called productivity software, because it, it really makes, you know, secretarial work and beyond secretarial work, just business work. Let's say it that way. It makes business work just so much easier. Okay. Uh, you know, like if you were in the, the 60s and you were typing on these mechanical typewriters, all right, uh, you know, and you had to write a thousand letters, there'd be, there'd be secretaries typing all day long doing this, you know. I don't know how long that would take, but you can imagine how much work it is. And all of that 
1,000 letters, it's it's all just now one letter. You just type it once and then you do this thing called a mail merge. And I, like I said, I'll demonstrate that when we talk about databases. And so this is amazing, isn't it? You know, you just do this mail merge and poof, you, you write the letter once and it's done. And um, this is what uh, I, this is what in IT is called scalable. Okay. So scalable means, you know, how, how does the task, how much harder does the task get? if I have more and more customers. So if I double the number of customers, how much more work, extra work do I have to do? In the old days, if you were using mechanical typewriters, you double the number of customers, you double the amount of work you have to do. But not today, because you just write that template once. You can write it once for 10 customers, for a thousand customers, for a million customers. It doesn't matter how many customers, it's the same amount of work. And so this scales a lot better. Okay, so that's that magic word that they use in IT. How scalable is it? In other words, they're asking like, how much extra work do I have to do as my customer base gets bigger and bigger and bigger? Okay, and so these word processors, yeah, they, they do the task of formatting everything nicely. But again, they operate with these database program in the background and it makes productivity so much better. Okay, and I think you can see now why this database program like Microsoft Access is the, is the core of, uh, you know, office software. All right. Uh, unfortunately, it's not they don't sell that to you for very cheap. OK, so you're going to be paying a lot of money for it. But, you know, if you're a company and you need to keep track of like thousands of customers and, you know, you don't want to have your secretaries type out a thousand letters. Now, they wouldn't type out a thousand letters. You could do cut and paste. But still, could you imagine like doing cut and paste for a thousand different letters? That would be insane. Uh, you know, you, you couldn't do it. Uh, well, I guess you could do it, but you know, you understand that's not very productive, okay? And so, uh, yeah, these databasing programs are central, okay? So I hope I've given you a kind of a flavor into um, uh, how the entire productivity uh, software suite fits together, okay? Uh, the database program being the center and then these other uh, programs tapping into it to get the data out of it to process, okay? And you know what a word processor does? It just basically makes nice text, okay? Spreadsheets, the same sort of thing. Again, we aren't going to get very deep into it, but I'm, I'm going to show you how to use a spreadsheet so that you can um, do enough with it that you can certainly do anything that you want to have to do here at Duval College or want to do at Duval College in terms of analysis, okay? Uh, uh, one way to understand a, a what a spreadsheet is is kind of like a bulk calculator. Let me put it this way. I, I analyze your grades using spreadsheets. Okay, things like that. I do my home finances in terms of spreadsheets. Okay, um, if I did an experiment when I teach uh, physics labs, you know, they I don't teach them that often. But when I do, you know, they have to analyze, you know, a whole columns of number. We use spreadsheets, things like that. Okay, so they're like bulk calculators. All right, and then you know, there's other other programs that are part of that suite that also help out in the office. All right, let's start concentrating on. Um, on uh, uh, word processors, okay? So um, I don't want to teach you any particular word processor because what I'm trying to teach you is something that applies to all word processors, okay? Now over time things will change, but pretty much this is what I'm going to teach you is like kind of the staple of all word processors out there, okay? And you might say, well, what different word processors do, are there out there? Like what choices do I have? So the most popular one is a Microsoft Word, okay? Uh, you know, that's the .docx files, okay? So those files are, you know, basically Microsoft Word files and we email them back and forth and you can open them up in, in programs and so on, all right? And um, oh, great, there it is. Uh, but there's others, okay? Um, I'm actually not going to teach you with Microsoft Word, okay? In, in a minute when we start to get into the word processor, I'm actually going to be using LibreOffice Writer. Uh, I don't feel that you're cheated. Uh, they have all the same features. In fact, I think LibreOffice Writer has probably more features than uh, Microsoft Word. They are organized a little bit differently. Okay, they are organized a little bit different in terms of where the buttons are and how the menus are. But every one of the features, I like, I literally don't know of any features that are in Microsoft Word that aren't in LibreOffice and vice versa. I think though LibreOffice has some extra things, but um, I don't quote me on that, okay, because I'm, I'm not very deep into, you know, using productivity software, okay. But, you know, even if you don't have, uh, uh, if you don't want a program, you can actually do word processing through the web page, and that's what Google Docs is. So, so Google will actually give you, um, it gives you a web page, and you can go to that web page, and you can just basically work on uh, documents there and so on, okay. Uh, let me show you um, uh, the uh, web page for LibreOffice Writer and for Google Docs, okay? So um, what we're looking at right now is basically the web page for uh, Google Docs. And you go to, if you have to have a Google account, and you just go to docs.google.com, 
All right. And you get this uh, web page here come up. All right. And th there's a bunch of templates for documents and so on. And uh, what you can do then is just up in the upper right corner here like that. You click and it says docs and sheets and slides and then uh, forms. All right. So docs are basically like um, like um, uh, Word document files. All right. Uh, word processor files. Okay. Sheets are like spreadsheets and uh, slides are like a presentation software. And uh, forms are kind of like the database, but you know, none of these have a lot of features. Okay. So these are, uh, you know, Google Docs is nice, but it, it really is a slimmed down version of Office software. It's okay for like home use. Okay. And you say, well, I want to do a doc. Okay. I want to do like a, a Word document. Then right? you click on this and uh, oh, then you click on blank like that. All right. And there you are, you're in the middle of like, you know, writing something. So I'll just write something here. So this is a, oh, let's get rid of that. This is a Google Doc uh, Word document like that. Okay. And uh, there's really no saving it because it's automatically there. Okay. You can move it to the trash. You can do all sorts of things like um, uh, through the menu item there. But, um, you know, if you just go back like there, uh, it's automatically there and I actually have two because um, I was working on this uh, before because okay, so there's the one from before and this is the one that I just did right now they're both untitled documents all right and you know you can throw them away and so on all right if you don't have Microsoft Word I mean feel free to use this okay so um, there's uh, Google Docs and now for um, uh, for LibreOffice, uh, you go to their uh, website. It's uh, LibreOffice.org. Uh, again, you don't have to do this um, for this course. I'm just showing you this because it's there. And it gives you an entire um, Office uh, suite, including the database program, for free. And you go, wow, I, you know, like that's $500 for the Microsoft Office Business Edition. And you go, well, and why is this one free? Because it's open source. Okay, it's open source. Now it is huge. Um, I think the last time I downloaded this it was like 350 uh, uh, megabytes. Okay, so this is a big program. It's going to uh, take up a lot of space on your hard drive and so on. Take a long time to download and take, a lot, take up a lot of space. But, uh, you know, it, it's worth it and it is free. Okay, so I'm going to be teaching you with the LibreOffice suite. But uh, again, don't don't feel that you're missing anything if you have the Microsoft Office suite because it's all kind of the same thing. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, let's start with the de more details. Okay. Of um, uh, word processors. All right. So most of you have already used the word processor and I'm not going to show you a lot of things about word processors uh, that you already know. Okay. I'm going to show you things that you probably don't know and that you should know because if you implement the things that I'm showing you today, it'll make your papers look really nice. OK, so, um, you know, like if you submit a paper for well, as a thesis or you submit a paper to a journal or, or whatever, or even if you're just mailing a paper like for your class, you want it to look nice. You want it to look uniform. You want it to look professional. OK, and if you have to conform to some style like APA style or something like that, and you learn what APA style, you want to make sure that your word processor is producing that for you. And yet you're not wasting a lot of time. Um, trying to get it to look right. So, you know, a lot of students will do a lot of things like put in spaces here and there and, uh, you know, it kind of looks okay, but it doesn't. And so, uh, you know, there are ways to make your paper look really good, like really professional. And that's kind of the point of a word processor. All right. So you say, well, how do, you know, what do I need to know to make sure that everything looks nice? And I think the, the thing that most people don't realize are about word processors, they don't think this way, is that word processors really have three levels of um, they have three levels of, of, of formatting. OK, so what are these three levels? All right. So the lowest level is what's what you call uh, character level formatting. OK, and what that means is that, you know, you can make individual letters conform to particular styles. All right. So, you know, like uh, there are different font styles. All right. So a font style, you probably know what that is. It's just like, you know, what does a, what does the letter T look like? OK, and there's like different font styles like Arial and there's, uh, you know, like Times Roman and all these things. OK, so what does that mean? Times Roman? It's just a style. It's just the way that the letter T is drawn on the page. OK, and if you compared one font from with another, you would say, yeah, this this T looks different than that one and, and so on. OK, so, um, you know, one of the things you could change are the different font styles. OK, you could also change the font size to make your letters bigger or smaller. OK, you can make your letters bold. You can make your letters um, uh, italic. You can make them bold and italic. You can, you know, uh, 
uh, make them um, uh, underscore them, strike through, all that kind of thing. You can put colors on them and so on. All right. And uh, all these things are character level uh, formatting. You can apply to one character at a time or you can highlight a group of characters and just apply to those characters and so on. And um, there's one level. OK, now another level that most people know about. So most people know about character level. Another people level that most people know about is the page level. OK, and um, most of our documents uh, stay purely electronically. So, you know, if you were to write a paper for a class, uh, it's not like you're going to print it out. You may have to, you know, if the professor's kind of old fashioned, uh, I would rather not have a printed out paper. I would rather you, you just emailed it to me. You just emailed me the, the docx file. OK, and uh, then, you know, I just open it up locally, electronically and so on. So I never, you know, these these files, they these um, um, text files, sorry, uh, word processing files, they never really make it to paper. OK, they could but they don't. All right. So a lot of times we don't have to worry about the page level formatting. But suppose that you actually were going to print this out because like you had to print out a thesis. Now, when you go to print out a thesis, there's there's a lot of rules you have to follow, like the margin size. OK. And the margin size may not be the default that the word processor gives you. Also, the page size. So, you know, most of our pages that you print out are the standard eight and a half by 11, okay, eight and a half inches by 11 inches. OK. And, you know, you, you print that out and so on. Uh, but, you know, there's there's legal size, which is I think it's 11 by 14 and all these different size uh, uh, pages. OK. And if you were to actually physically print this out, you better make sure that the page size that your document is in the electronic document actually matches the page size that you're going to print out because if it doesn't like if you do uh, eight and a half by 11 on, on 11 by 14 it's going to look very funny because you're going to have you know just this little bit of text at the one corner of the page and then the rest of it is blank okay and that's probably not what you want all right so yeah there's there's reason to do page level formatting but then there's the other the, the intermediate level which is paragraph level formatting and this is the one that few people know about but it's probably the most important okay so what is this paragraph level formatting so when you're writing a paper okay uh you know and you look at the page mostly what you're going to see are paragraphs okay so what is a paragraph i mean i don't know what exactly what the definition is but it's basically a sequence a series of sentences a set of sentences that form like one kind of unit of thought okay so you know like in, in this style of writing called classic style this is probably how you were taught to write essays in uh, in high school you know the first sentence of a paragraph is supposed to kind of introduce an idea and then the body of the paragraph is supposed to like elaborate on that idea and then the final sentence of the paragraph is supposed to kind of summarize it okay something like that okay and then that forms one unit and then you go on to your next point and then your next point and so every paragraph kind of becomes like the elaboration of some point of some idea some notion that you've basically elaborated on okay and you know that roughly that's how you're supposed to um, organize your essay or your paper or whatever. OK, now um, you want all of those paragraphs to conform to the same kind of style. In other words, the first line should be indented the certain way. Uh, the spacing between the, the lines of the paragraph should be like maybe one and a half or maybe double spacing, depending on what style you choose and so on. And you want to make sure that they all look the same. OK, now, if they don't look the same and someone looks at your paper, they're going to go, wait a sec. This just looks awful because, you know, this paragraph looks like that. The next paragraph looks different. The next paragraph looks different. And I've seen papers like that and then what was going on is the students didn't know how to make the entire paper conform to the same style and so you know they tried things like putting spaces in here and there and it, it doesn't quite work because the spaces are actually in a word processor they're actually a variable size because the word processor is trying to do the formatting one way and you're trying to make it do the formatting in a different way okay and so this paragraph level is very important. OK, and, and we'll go through that in, in detail. OK, so if you get if you get to understand how this paragraph level formatting works, then, um, you know, you're going to make sure that you're going to be able to make sure that your papers look really professional. OK, so those are the three different levels of, um, uh, of formatting that you have with a word for, uh, processor. And uh, let's start off. We'll go through each of them. OK, we'll actually do the character, then the page, and then we'll do the paragraph last because the paragraph, uh, as I said, is probably the most important. OK, so um, uh, the character level, I already described to you what it entails. It's like the font style and the font size. It's any kind of emphasis like bold, italic, underlined, and so on. OK, and it's also uh, background color, like you can change the color of the letters and so on. There's a lot of things you can change. All of this sort of character level formatting is in um, can be obtained through the menu 
uh, and it's basically under the header um, heading format and then you choose character okay now it, it's a little different uh, again you know like depending on what word processor you're using it looks a little different but basically if you want to see everything that you can do with um, the uh, character level formatting go to the menu item okay there are buttons all right and the buttons are great if you know what feature you want uh, there might be a button for it but there are more features available for character level formatting under the format character menu than there are buttons okay so the buttons are more like shortcuts whereas the menu has the whole set of things okay so you know if you're looking for a particular character level formatting and you go I can't find the button for it that's okay go to the menu item it'll be there by the way there are also these short keys uh, you know like you can do control G and things like that or control B I think and and you know that does bold and so on and, and if you learn those that's even faster than clicking a button okay but you know um, I'm more interested about the features than finding those features you'll figure out how to find the features all right so um, let's switch to uh, LibreOffice here and I've already got a document up and um, I've actually switched the view here let me show you how I did that uh, under view there's a place at the bottom where uh, you, you can change it to a hundred percent I'm sorry 150 percent so this is extra big okay now um, the only other thing I got to tell you is that unfortunately with um, the video uh, recording software that I have when I click on a menu item like you know I'm clicked on format there unfortunately it doesn't really show up in in here okay so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of uh, jumping back and forth between windows to show you all the features okay but you're not going to be able to actually see me clicking on the format character okay but um, I'll just tell you when I do it all right so it might look a little weird but um, I, I think you'll figure out what's going on okay it's just that it doesn't you know when I click on like uh, like format here on that you won't see the actual menu pop up underneath it all right it's it's just a again a, a shortfall of this recording software okay so um, let me let me put some text in here because we got to have something to format and uh, I'm just going to start off with uh, the default and it's going to be like uh, the uh, I don't know the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane like that okay so great um, you're just seeing some text there okay now I don't know let's say we want to pick on um, the the word Spain there we want to format that all right so one way to, to decide what you're going to format is you can click and drag across it like that and that highlights Spain uh, another way is if you just like double click it'll highlight a word if you triple click in a sentence it'll click it'll highlight the whole sentence if you quadruple click it'll actually highlight a whole paragraph but I haven't shown you a paragraph yet okay so I mean I've just got one sentence so if I quadruple clicked it, it, it um, I can't show you because it's just like I said it's just one sentence but if it were a whole paragraph it would just literally highlight the whole paragraph all the sentences that are part of that paragraph okay so let's just pick on Spain here and if uh, so I'm going now to format character and, and you can't see me doing that but um, what happened is a window popped up and let me actually switch to that window okay there it is all right so it's a little small uh, but um, it, it's all I think you're it's good enough okay so what you could see here is uh, you know there's some tabs along the top here like that and then there's font okay is one tab and then there's font effect there like that okay and uh, then there's position hyperlink highlighting border and so on I don't want to go through all of those I'm just showing you all these things because those are all the features um, all the things that you could do a character level formatting okay uh, the easier way to to do this is to just do it through the buttons okay so I'm gonna uh, switch back to this window right here and I'm going to show you how you can just do the formatting with the buttons okay so um, the the first button you'll see here is this bold button here like that and so if you click on that you get bold okay and you click on it again and it becomes unbold and you can italic and you can bold in italic you can bold italic and and underscore okay so any combination and then strike through like that okay so there's all sorts of possibilities and uh, again you can get this through the buttons or you could get it through the that window that I showed you a minute ago the other thing you could do is um, let me get rid of all that formatting okay uh, you can actually uh, put highlighting okay so let me click off of that and you can see that what I did was I pressed this button right here it looks like a highlighter pen and ta -da, now I've got Spain highlighted like that okay and uh, let me unhighlight it so I'm gonna again triple sorry double click on that and turn off the highlighting and if I highlight that and then I can actually change the 
text color. So this one changes the text color to A. All right. And we can go on. Uh, let me just show you maybe how to change the, uh, the font style. So let me go back to, oh, I can't seem to go back to black here. Uh, there we go. Now it is there. All right. So uh, back to to the original uh, black text there like that. If you wanted to change your font uh, style, here you see that the current font style is called Liberation Serif. I don't even know what where that name comes from. Um, and uh, you could switch to some other font styles. You could click there. And I don't know, I'm just gonna change to this uh, Chilanka. I've never heard of it before, but you could see that here, I'll make it bold so you can really see it. You can see that, you know, Spain is in a different style. It's like the, the shape of the letter S is different, okay? And uh, you can also change the uh, the size, all right? You could change it from 12 point to say, I don't know, 16 point like that, okay? And now Spain is a lot bigger, all right? Uh, and so, you know, by changing, uh, probably you don't want to change the font style, but s font style, but changing the um, uh, the font size, you can make like, you know, your headers and things like that. All right. So uh, let's get rid of this. And that's enough for um, uh, character level. All right. Okay. Because there's not much to it. And you've, you've probably all done this already. Okay. Uh, oh, you know, one, one more thing I should probably show you with uh, uh, uh font, uh, sorry, character level is like, uh, uh, suppose I have um, the temperature outside is, I don't know, 55 degrees like that. You see my little O there, okay? That's supposed to be like a degree sign. It's supposed to be a superscript. And uh, again, whether you go through the menu item or you go through the... Um, the buttons here you could create a sub a superscript or a subscript this button right here is a superscript and you could see that what i did was i when i clicked on it let me take the highlighting off when i clicked on it it made the little o a superscript and there you go you've got a superscript okay and uh, to get rid of the superscripting you can highlight that and then click on it again and then it removes the, the superscript okay and uh, there it is now there's a lot more but like i said i don't want to overwhelm you with a lot of those uh, little details. You can actually rotate letters and, um, and all sorts of crazy stuff. If you say to me, I want to know everything that I can do at character level formatting, everything, go to the menu item, format character. Okay, so just go format and then uh, character like that. And uh, you'll bring up that, that extra win that secondary window. And in there, you'll see everything that you can do. Okay, so you just search through that and you can find what you can do and what you can't do. All right, great. What's next? Well, next, let's take a look at the uh, page level. All right, page level formatting. So let's go back to this. And uh, now, um, again, I can't show you me clicking on format and page style, but when I do that, I get an extra window that comes up and let me switch that window. There it is, there's the window that just showed up, okay? And you say, well, what am I looking at here? And uh, what you're looking at is the page size. OK, and so uh, if you take a look up uh, around right here, it says 8.5. That's the width of the page. And then below it, it says the height is 11 inches. And there is your standard eight and a half by 11 uh, size paper. OK, now, do you have to change that? Well, if you're just doing a purely electronic text, I mean, why would you want to change it? Just stick with eight and a half by 11. OK, if you were to print it out, then you better make sure that that eight and a half eleven matches the eight and a half eleven printer uh, page, the eight and a half by eleven paper that's in the printer. Okay, uh, so you know, uh, yeah, it's there. And uh, there's other things you can change there, like uh, you can change the the letter. You know, I could change it to legal, and uh, now legal is eight and a half by fourteen. Okay, so you can either change it manually by just typing in the numbers or you could change it by uh, under this format here. You can change it like legal and then you can go back to just plain old letter and so on. And there's a lot of different uh, uh, formats for the page size. There's some that uh, apply the envelope so that you could just like print out the outside of an envelope, okay? Like with the um, destination address and the return address and so on, okay? Uh, now, the other thing I wanna show you here is the margin. All right. And there's kind of a little picture here. So you know that when you've got a page, the text doesn't go right up to the edge of the page. OK, um, that wouldn't be good. All right. And so there's like a left margin, a right margin, a top margin and a bottom margin. That's basically that white 
uh, strip around the entire um, outside of the page, okay, that there's no text in. Now, why would you ever want to change that? Well, if you were doing a thesis and, you know, when you go to do a thesis, you have to bind the, the one end of it. Okay, like the, I think it's like the left-hand side you have to bind. And if you're going to bind the left-hand side, maybe there's a rule that you have to do more than 0.79 inches. Maybe you have to do like one and a half inches. And then what you would do is you go here and you go, you know what, I can't do uh, uh, a, a left margin of 0.79. I have to do 1.5 inches like that. Okay, and you just put 1.5 inches there, and then ta da! Now you could see here, you could actually see there's a little picture up here that shows that the left margin is a little bigger. And you say, Well, why would I ever need to do that? Well, you know, look at whatever the specifications are for your, um, you know, for binding the thesis or whatever. Uh, I, I don't know any of those details, but they'll tell you, and they'll say, You know, for your thesis, make sure that your left margin is 1.5 inches. Okay. And if you don't and you bring it there, well, then they'll say, Well, we can't bind this because it'll just clip off some of the paper, some of the writing. And so, you know, you want to print it out and you want to print it out with one and a half inches on the uh, left hand side there, something like that. Okay. And uh, okay, great. So we can, we can change that. Uh, the margins there, okay, 0.79. There's other things you can do, and um, whoops, uh, I won't go through them because uh, they're not that interesting, okay? There are things like you could put borders, like you can put borders around the whole uh, page and so on, but I, I don't know what purpose that would have. All right, let's switch back to here. Let's go to this uh, paragraph level. Now, before I actually uh, demonstrate this, let's understand that everything that you can do at this paragraph level, okay? So, uh, the stuff you can, to, to get at all the stuff that you can do at paragraph level, you can always go through the menu and it's under format and then under format you click paragraph, okay? And then a window comes up. I'll show you that in a minute. At that level, at the paragraph level, you can then set the shape of your paragraphs, okay? And I'll show you what defines a paragraph in a minute, at least as far as a word processor goes. So the first thing that you probably want to set is um, like, where are your margins for the paragraph? Not for the whole page, but for the paragraph. Like, you know, the first line of a paragraph is usually indented. How far do you want to indent it? I think the rule is like it's supposed to be about half an inch. But again, don't quote me. Look at the style, okay, when you when you, when you have to actually write something. Look at the style. So the first line, all first lines of a paragraph are indented uh, um, uh, half an inch, okay? The left side and the right side are usually right up to the margins, but sometimes you want to do what's called a block quote, I'll show you what that is in a minute, and then you want to bring in those margins by half an inch and not do a, a, a half inch on the first line, okay? So all that kind of like body indentations and indentation of the first line, basically your indentations, that's all should be done at the paragraph level, okay? Uh, and I'll show you how to do that, like I said, in just a minute, all right? Now, what a lot of people do is rather than using the paragraph level formatting features, in a word processor. They'll actually try to use a tab to do, you know, uh, the, ind the indentation of the first line. And if you've done that in the past and it worked for you, fine, but that's not the best way to do it. And the reason is that tabs are different sizes on different lines. And I know you you say, I didn't experience that. Yeah, they can be. Again, I'll show you that. You can show you that the tabs will actually be different sizes on different um, uh, uh, on different lines. They can be different sizes. And you can ask, you can set where those tabs are. OK, and uh, there's other things you can set there, like, you know, with your paragraph, it's like how much space is there between the lines of the paragraph? OK, usually you do like um, uh, one and a half spacing, OK, like an, an, an essay or something like that. You could do double spacing, but that's generally too far apart. One and a half spacing. You could do single spacing, but then the, the lines are pretty close together. Generally, one and a half spacing is what's acceptable for paragraphs. OK, but then there's also spacing before the paragraph and there's spacing after the paragraph. And what that is, is like because there are two paragraphs, are the two paragraphs right up against one another? Is there some space between the two paragraphs and so on? And so that could be set also through paragraph spacing. And you'll see how, how nice it looks when I when I do that. Uh, and uh, there's still more things, too. All right. Now, once you've set that paragraph formatting for one paragraph, your paper is made up of many paragraphs. And you say, well, how do I have to do that for every single one of the paragraphs? And the answer is no. What you could do is if you get the, the, the formatting right for one of the paragraphs, okay, every time you hit enter or return on a Mac, okay, you hit the enter key, what happens is you go to the next paragraph and the next paragraph automatically inherits the all the formatting from the previous 
paragraph. So if you get your first paragraph right, and you're typing, 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 and you say, oh, time for another paragraph, and you hit return, you don't have to redo all that formatting. As soon as you hit return, you begin the new paragraph, and the new paragraph has exactly the same formatting as the previous paragraph. And so every time you create a new paragraph, if it's created from the previous paragraph by hitting a return, then or enter, then what happens is, is you're automatically uh, propagating the same paragraph formatting throughout your paper. Every single paragraph has the same formatting. And then by the time you're done, the whole paper will look very nice because it'll all have uniform paragraph formatting. Okay, so there's the, the secret. All right, so now how do we get this paragraph level formatting? So let's go back here. Now, uh, I need to create a paragraph, and I'm just going to create a, a rather boring paragraph. I'm just going to take um, the sentence, uh, the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. And that's just one uh, sentence, okay? I'm going to put two spaces there, and I'm just going to copy all of this. Oh, by the way, here, uh, yeah, triple click, and I'm going to go copy, and I'm just going to paste, 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 paste. Oh. Uh, why is it complaining? It's complaining because I've only got one space in there. Right, there we go. Oh yeah, you can see the red underlining right there. Okay, that red underlining and that highlighted portion of the text basically said there's a problem there. And basically after a period you're supposed to put two, uh, uh, yeah, after a period you're supposed to put two spaces. Okay, so uh, let me let me do a few more, um, let me do a few more uh, sentences here so that I have a Whoops. Okay, that's a good size paragraph. Okay, so there's a paragraph. Now, um, if I hit enter, so I never hit enter there. I did, basically, the text is just wrapping as I was typing it. If I hit enter, I begin the next line. That's a new paragraph, okay? For this other paragraph, let me just say uh, this is a different paragraph, okay? And I can do, you know, maybe a bunch of copy pastes here like that. And you look at this and you go, whoa, how in the world can I tell one paragraph from another? Because everything's stuck together. There's actually two paragraphs there and you wonder, how, how can I tell? Well, there's this button right up here at the top. And it kind of looks like a backwards P and it's, it's blue, okay? It's basically the paragraph symbol. And uh, what it really means is, uh, it's not like the paragraph, the show me the paragraphs, it's show me any white characters that are in this text. And you remember what a, a white character was from when I taught you ASCII? Uh, basically, it's any character which is responsible for, for the formatting, okay? So if we click that button, you can see the button is now highlighted. And now if you look through the text, you'll notice that every place that there's a space, it's a little, might be a little hard to see here. I'll, I'll expand this just, just once, okay? It's gonna get really big, but just so you can see it just this once, I'll, I'll shrink it down again. But you can see every place where there's a, there's a space, there's a little blue dot. Okay, and then at the end of a paragraph, there's this paragraph symbol like that. And so, you know, if I go back over here, you'll notice, look at that. That is basically the end of the paragraph. Okay, so I made that big. Uh, let me make it smaller again so that we could see everything together. And you could see that basically, uh, basically, you know, you've got uh, right from the beginning of the, the text there all the way down to there. That's your first paragraph. And you can tell that the paragraph ends at that point because you've got the paragraph end of paragraph symbol okay and then there's all this text and then there's the end of paragraph symbol there like that okay now if you were to print this text that those blue dots in the blue paragraph symbol they would not show up those are there just so you could see what's in your text like what did you type so for instance if i were to put a tab i'm going to put a tab right at the end like how in the world would you know that there's a tab at the end? Because if you turn off all of those symbols, okay, like that, you see that like you can't see that there's a tab there. Like you see, so I don't know where my tabs are. I don't know where my spaces are in the text. I don't know anything. You say, well, show me all the tabs and spaces and new paragraphs and so on. And ta-da. So a dot, a blue dot, that's a, uh, a space that you get by the space bar. This arrow basically means a tab. And the paragraph symbol means end of paragraph. And go, oh, look at that. I've got this extra tab in there and I want to get rid of it. You can just backspace over it, okay and go I've got those extra you know uh, uh, spaces there let me get rid of those and so on okay and there you go okay now um, 
let me get rid of that second paragraph. You see, how do you do that? If you quadruple click, it's kind of hard to do, but if you quadruple click, one, two, three, four, you'll notice that what it did was the quadruple click highlights an entire paragraph. Okay? And so a uh, single click just moves your uh, the cursor around. Double click will highlight a word. Triple click will highlight a sentence. And quadruple click will highlight an entire paragraph. I'm going to hit delete uh, like that. And ta-da! I'm back to just one paragraph. Okay? Now, why did I do that? Because I want to format this paragraph before I start putting in a bunch of text, okay? Because um, I want all of my paragraphs to look, have the same formatting. All right, so I'm gonna go to the um, format and I'm gonna go down to paragraph. And what's happening right now is a window popped up. Let me switch to that window so you could see it. And there it is. This is the uh, paragraph window. Let me make that a little bit bigger for you. Okay, like that. And uh, you've got a bunch of different tabs in here okay so like there's the indentation and spacing which is the important one mo most important one there's alignment okay there's text flow uh, uh, uh bullets and numbering or outline and numbering uh, we'll look at that later and, and so on okay i don't want to go through all of these because uh there's qu quite a bit there like there's borders if you want to put like a box around your paragraph i don't know why you'd want to do that but if you wanted to you could okay now uh, what are you seeing here well there's indent and then there's uh, indentation before the text, indentation after the text, and indentation of the first line. They're all zero right now, which basically means that the text goes right up against the margins, okay? Uh, which is mostly what you want, but sometimes you want your first line indented by half an inch. And so over here, we're going to change that first line to an indentation of 0.5 inches like that, okay? And there you go. So uh, the way the paragraph is going to look like now is something like this. So this this little image to the uh, on the right here, it's supposed to show you kind of what it looks like. And it basically shows that uh, there's uh, the first line here. You see how it's indented a little bit like that. OK, uh, there's this thing called block indentation. That's if you have like a quote and it's a really long quote. And then you might want to actually not indent the first line. OK, but you might want to indent the entire block by, say, one inch on the one side. And whoops, I accidentally closed that uh, window. Let me bring it back up again. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, there it goes. OK, now it appeared again. OK, so uh, basically um, uh, one inch on the one side and then maybe one inch on the other side like that. And oh, I, I did it again. I apologize. Let me go back. Uh, what's happening is I'm... Uh, 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 I'm uh, basically uh, just out of force of habit. I'm uh, hitting the enter key when I'm when I've done making a change. Okay, so uh, but take a look at what happened here. The 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 gray outline that's the page margin. Okay, that's set in the the page formatting. And take a look. In addition to that margin, there's now an extra inch and a half. Okay, so it basically says that the paragraph begins an inch inch and a half in, and then the paragraph goes to at, at most an inch from the other other side there like that. I, I agree that looks kind of funny. Uh, so that's probably not what we want. But let me go back and uh, fix the formatting. Okay. Now, um, you put your cursor anywhere, anywhere inside the, the, the paragraph that you want to format. And again, format, uh, format paragraph like that. And let me switch to that window. So you can see it. There it is. Okay. And let me make it a little bit bigger for oops. Let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see. All right. So there you could see, you know, it was set to like one inch, one inch, and then zero. Let's switch. Let's put it all back to zero, zero like that. And let's make this 0.5. Okay. That's usually what you want right there. Okay. See, so, so the first line is indented half an inch. And then there's no indentation, no extra indentation on the uh, left or the right. Okay. Now there's the next part, which is the spacing. And you go, well, what's that about? Well, after you write a paragraph, you want to know, is there any space between it and the next paragraph? OK, and you got to watch it because you can put space at the before the paragraph. You can put space after the paragraph. And usually the way you want to do this is you usually want to put a little bit of space before the paragraph because you might have a header or something and then you want some space and then you want the paragraph. OK, so I always put the spacing at above the paragraph. I'm going to put half an inch spacing above the paragraph like that. 
okay and that takes care of that and you can see now let me let me, let me exaggerate it so you can really see it okay uh, well, it doesn't really show up that well. I thought it was going to show up a little bit better, but basically that's the spacing right here where my cursor is, okay, between that and the next line. But one and a half is too much, so we'll just go back to 0.5 like that, okay? And then uh, finally, uh, in this tab, there's the line spacing. What that means is how much space is there between lines, okay? So single spacing means, you know, the, the text is right up against the the text from the previous line. Usually you want one and a half spacing. Okay, so whoops, one and a half. There we go. So one and a half spacing. And you see here now there's more spaces between the two lines. Okay, and uh, there it is. Okay, uh, again, there's a lot more features in there, and um, I invite you to explore it on your own. Okay, so uh, let's uh, say okay to this and switch back to this okay let me make sure that it let me does that look good yeah it does okay good all right now let's take a look at what we did here um, so now you'll notice that the first line is indented an extra half inch beyond the margin of the page okay on at the top of the paragraph there's half an inch there okay that might be a little bit too much but that's okay we'll go for that uh, we'll go with that for a bit because then at least you could see what's going on okay and then there's the end of the paragraph notice that i have all the the paragraph stuff on okay like the the, the show the hidden characters on and you'll notice that there's no tab there it's not like i had to use a tab to get that indentation it's just automatically part of the paragraph okay and you'll notice that i didn't have to put like any of those extra like people in order to space things uh, vertically on a page they'll put like a bunch of like new line characters in there okay i didn't have to do any of that it just automatically works out that um you know it gives a half an inch there and uh, now we look at this and we go yeah i want all my paragraphs to look just like that okay so what do you do uh, if you want your next paragraph to look like that, you put your cursor at the end of the uh, paragraph and you hit enter and it automatically goes and you'll notice, look at all that space there before the next line. Okay, it automatically created a new paragraph and this new paragraph has exactly the same formatting as the previous one. Okay, so I don't want to sit here and type a lot, so I'm just going to do a copy and paste like this and I'm going to copy and paste a whole bunch of sentences. All right. So uh, uh, here I am, I'm typing, I'm typing, I'm typing, I'm typing, I'm typing, I'm typing. And I get to this paragraph and now what do I do? I hit enter and I've got another paragraph going on. Okay, let me, um, uh, let me shrink down the size of the page so you can see it all in one. Actually, let me shrink it a little bit more. I'll, I'll make it bigger again, see. But let's just go to that. Uh, well, that's too small. That's too small. Okay, let me uh, try 75%. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. So, you know, uh, don't worry about the, the details of the text. Take a look here. You can see here that uh, all of the formatting from the first paragraph was inherited by the second paragraph. Before the paragraph begins, there's half an inch. The first line is indented by half an inch. And then as soon as you, I hit enter, I didn't have to redo all the formatting. It automatically gave me a second paragraph. And that second paragraph was preceded by half an inch with uh, indentation of the first line by half an inch. And then I don't know if you could see it here, but when I hit enter, there's the new paragraph right there. Okay, let me uh, make this big again so you could see what's going on. And uh, there it is. There's the, you know, I hit enter there and boom, it created a new paragraph, automatically made all the spacing right. Okay, I didn't have to hit like enter several times. Okay, it just automatically put half an inch spacing uh, at the beginning. OK, and so um, what you're seeing here is how paragraph level formatting works. All right. So great. Um, uh, now what? Well, what if you have a paragraph in the body of text that is supposed to be different than the rest of the text? OK, so um, I don't know if you how, how well you know certain styles, but, you know, if you've got a short quote, 
you know, and it's like, you know, maybe like half a line or a line long. You, you, you're just like, you're, you're quoting some author, like Shakespeare. You're quoting Shakespeare. The quality of mercy is not strained. You, know, you, you start it with a, you know, the quote mark and you write, the quality of mercy is not strained. And you say, close quote. And there's your one um, uh, sentence. But what if you wanted to quote something big, like lots of lines? What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to break into another paragraph and you're supposed to do a block quote, okay, where you put like an extra inch on one side, inch on the other side, and you don't uh, um, uh, you don't indent the first line. So let's go back and uh, see. Whoops, let's go back and see how we would do that. All right. So um, over here, let let's say that I I want to do a block quote, and um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create um, two empty paragraphs. So here's an empty paragraph, and there's another empty paragraph. Okay. And so um, in this intermediate empty paragraph, they both have the same formatting, okay? Now, the reason I did that is because this paragraph here is what I'm going to use to continue my formatting to subsequent paragraphs. And this middle paragraph, that's the one that I'm going to modify in a minute, okay? So I don't know. Uh, Shakespeare, the quality of mercy is not strained. Okay, and I'm not going to type a bunch of uh, Shakespeare there. I'm just going to do my cup and paste, 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 like that, okay? So you see this paragraph here in the middle, okay? And down here is like, uh, this is a continuation of my text, okay? But uh, this piece here, that's supposed to be like a quote from Shakespeare. And it's not supposed to look like that. It's supposed to, uh, the first line is not supposed to be indented at all. And then there's supposed to be an extra inch on this side and an extra inch on that side. You say, well, how do I do that? Well, you could certainly, click here and go back to the menu, like click anywhere inside the paragraph. So, you know, like I put, I put my cursor here on where the word mercy is. Okay. So I just put the cursor there. It's hard for you to see. In fact, I don't think you can see it, but you know, my cursor is right there. Okay. Blakey. And you just put that there and then you can go back format paragraph and then change that. But there's another way to do it. And uh, that has to do with this bar right up here at the top. It looks like a ruler. Okay. And you go, what am I looking at here? So what you're looking at is uh, a bunch of tab markers and margin markers. You go, well, which is which? Like, what's going on? So you take a look here. You see that that top one there, that kind of like little triangle, gray triangle at the top there? I can move that around. That gray triangle corresponds to the indentation of the first line. So let me do something crazy here. I'm going to move this way into the middle. Look at that. So there's my gray marker there. And look at how far that indentation is there. There's no tab there. Okay, if there were, like, let me show you what a tab looks like. Whoops. Yeah, there we go. Uh, see, see that arrow? Wherever there's a tab, you would see a blue arrow. But there's no blue arrow. And you say, well, what, what, what put all this space? What put all that space, like, before that first line, from there all the way to the beginning? And there is nothing that put it there. It's just this, it's just that says that's where you begin your first line. That, that little gray triangle there, all right? So you say, well, I don't want to indent my first line at all. So just drag it all the way back to the margin, okay? And whoops, I have a, let me get rid of the, the tab there, okay? I accidentally hit the tab key. So you can see now that, that that little top triangle, that is where the first line is. So what's the bottom triangle? Well, the bottom triangle is the body of the text. So if I take that and I drag it to see the one inch mark here, like that, what happened? The entire margin of the paragraph was moved in from the margin of the page by one inch. Okay, and that's indicated by these. Okay. You see, but I want to do that to the other side too. Okay, so here's the other side and we want to drag it in one inch to the six inch mark here like that. So drag it from there to there like that and ta-da. You basically now have um, a paragraph which is a block uh, a, like a block quote, okay? Basically, it's indented one inch here, it's indented one inch there, and I, it looks it looks funny because, you know, you just see the same sentence over and over and over again, but, but you know, everything is basically limited to starting one inch from the uh, left-hand side and one inch from the right-hand side of the, of the margin of the page, okay? And uh, uh, there you go. That's how you can create a, a block quote. Now, this paragraph that I created a minute ago down here, this continuation of my text, that still has the original formatting. So if I take that and I copy this sentence 
and I go copy, paste, 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 like that. You'll see that this formatting here for that paragraph, for this paragraph right here, one, two, three, four, that formatting there is identical to this one here, one, two, three, four. Okay. All right. What I did was I created a bunch of like empty paragraphs and then I filled in the text for the paragraph that it wanted to be the exception and then I modified it. Okay. I modified that one. Right. And rather than going through the format paragraph, I just did it through these uh, the top uh, this top uh, ruler here like that. Okay, and you can do um, a lot of stuff here. Okay, uh, and using also these these buttons up here. Uh, like um, uh, let me show you here. Suppose I want uh, I think this is called a hanging indentation. Yeah, like that. Let me get rid of that. So what I did is notice where my uh, first line start. My first line starts actually half an inch. So there it is, half an inch. But then the rest of the body is one inch. Okay, so I mean that looks funny, but you know you could do that if you wanted to. Uh, you can move, you know, your your first line anywhere you like. All right, and then this the other one is the body of the text. Okay, so if you want the first line and the body of the text to both be aligned to one inch. Put both of those uh, gray triangles there. Now on the other side, there's only one gray triangle right there because uh, usually you don't do any kind of indentation of the first line, um, any independent indentation of the first line uh, from the uh, right margin. It's only the left margin where you do that. Okay. Um, there's other things you can do too uh, over here that you're using the buttons. And uh, um, let me see here. Let me highlight the whole paragraph uh, you can make the uh, the text further apart okay so um, I don't think you can see that but basically uh, this button right here that I'm clicking okay uh, this button right here where my cursor is allows me to make the spacing bigger or smaller okay so let me just make the spacing um, twice okay and there you go now it's like two times spacing or let me make the spacing smaller so there's a single spacing OK, so you don't have to go to the format paragraph um, menu. You could do it through the buttons, but, um, uh, you know, the buttons are, are there's only a few things you can do through the buttons. Through the menu, you can do everything. OK, so uh, there you go. So uh, let's go back to the one and a half spacing. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, let me just show you what the paper looks like now if I zoom out to 75. So there it is. All right, it's looking a lot more. It looks very uniform. All right. Yeah, let me go back here. Like that. Okay. Let me show you what not to do. All right. What not to do. Um, don't use tab keys for indentation. And you say, but that looks fine. Okay. I know. But um, the thing is, is that with uh, tab keys, um, there is this little tab marker right there. OK, and I can take that tab marker and I can move it anywhere I like. And what that means is that the size of a tab in one line could be different than the size of a tab in another line. And if you start doing that, you know, you're going to get big tabs in one place and small tabs in another place. And then you're not going to have the same kind of uniformity that you're guaranteed if you make use of the uh, uh, paragraph level formatting. OK, so um, yeah, tabs are good, but generally speaking, you know, uh, you don't want to be fooling around with tabs and you don't want to be even fooling around with spaces because the word processor will make decisions about how big to make your tabs and how big to make your spaces based on certain rules that you don't necessarily have control over. But you do have control over the indentation using the uh, paragraph level formatting, which you could use, uh, which you can set using that ruler up here or again through the, the menu here, format paragraph. OK, let me get rid of that tab there. And uh, uh, all right, there we go. OK, so um, I suspect a lot of you didn't know about that, but now you do. And now you know about this paragraph level formatting and you can um, just take, uh, you know, um, just set the, the formatting in one paragraph and then create others. OK, and you say, well, what about a title? A title is just one more paragraph that you can like an exceptional paragraph where you put it in there with the body formatting of the uh, body paragraph formatting of the whole text and then just change that one. OK, so let me just show you that very quickly over here. Suppose you say, oh, you know what? I want to make a uh, I want to make a header. So this is a uh, header. OK, um, or a heading. I shouldn't say header heading like that. And you go, well, I, I don't like that. I mean, uh, first I want it centered. OK, and you could say, OK, fine. If you're going to center it, then what you can do is you could just use this to center it like this. 
Okay, or another way to center it, probably a better way to center it is by using these buttons here, which is the center justification, like that. Okay, and so there it is. And then you say, well, that, that looks awful as a header because it's too small, so let's make it bigger font. And you say, well, it still doesn't look like a header. Okay, fine, let's make it bold. And go, well, it's looking a little bit more. How about we underline it? And how's that look for a header? Okay, so what I'm trying to show you there is what you want to do if you want to create a header is, sorry heading header means something different so heading is uh, basically take one paragraph and just make it an exceptional paragraph all right uh, and always just add a bunch of extra paragraphs like here i'll just add more paragraphs like that at the end and the reason i'm adding these extra blank paragraphs is because i'm guaranteed that those blank paragraphs because they were created from my original paragraph by just hitting return every time i hit return i reproduce the previous paragraphs uh, formatting and then I don't have to go back through the menu and like you know reset um, the uh, uh, the formatting uh, over and over and over again to the formatting that I want for the the body uh, for the the formatting for the paragraphs in the body of the text okay so uh, it's better to have a whole bunch of paragraphs with the same formatting in, even if they're empty and then just pick one and go oh well that's going to be my exceptional fair paragraph and then start breaking away from uh, from the uh, default uh, heading. Uh, sorry, default um, uh, formatting of paragraphs. Okay, so uh, there's that. Now, a uh, few more things and then uh, we're done. Uh, one of them is um, suppose uh, you are doing something and your formatting gets all messed up and you go, geez, now what do I do here? Uh, my formatting is all messed up. Um, there is a menu item, uh, format, clear direct formatting. And so if you highlight any part of your text, which has kind of been messed up, and you just go clear direct formatting, it goes back to default. Okay, and then you can start over. All right. Now, um, generally, you don't want to make use of that too much because then, you know, you're going to you have some parts that are in one formatting and some parts that are another but um, it is a, a useful feature i found when i cut and paste from something so if i have a web page and i cut and paste out of the web page and i put it into the uh, text well when you do this copy paste what happens is is the word processor tries to preserve as much of the original formatting as possible so it tries to preserve the original font the original font size and all that and it looks awful because it, it's uh out of sync with the formatting of the rest of the text. So, you know, this uh, uh, clear direct formatting uh, is very helpful. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to show you that because it's really simple. Just go under the formatting and uh, just find where it says clear direct formatting. And you'll see that it, that it does that. All right. Uh, a little less uh, trivial is um, uh, bullets, bullets and numbering. Okay. And as you can imagine, there is a menu item for that or you can use a button okay so uh, again under the format bullets and numbers you can do it or you can just use a button all right so let me show you that let's go back to um, our document here and uh, I don't know where we want to put a uh, okay let's let's put some uh, uh, right after that right after this point here uh, I'm gonna put a bunch of bullets okay and then uh, down here uh, my text my text continues here okay so uh, uh, this is my first point now that looks awful because if I put my next point this is my second point that looks terrible doesn't it because uh, you know they're just separated where's the bullets and all that so let's get rid of this like that let's go back to this and uh, uh, you can go up here and it's right there these two are both bullets. This one's for bullets and that one's for numbers. Okay, it's kind of small, but if you take a look at this one, it's just got dots at the beginning of the paragraphs. And uh, those are basically bullets and this one's got numbers. Okay, I'll, do just, I'll just do bullets and I'll just do a default style. And you can see that I click that button right there and ta-da, I've got my first uh, point here and it's a bullet, okay? And then I can hit enter like this and it creates another one. You go, wow, that's, that's far apart. I mean, and I agree. And so what I would do at this point is um, format, clear direct formatting, 
okay and you can see what just happened it like totally changed and now it's like very close and then uh, if you need to you can go back into your uh, format paragraph and start putting some spaces in there and so on uh, before your bullets but basically every single bullet that you make after this will just adopt the same formatting as this one okay so um, you know maybe maybe we do want the bullets to be right up against the the, the bottom of that other paragraph so we have this and then I'm going to go enter and look at that it created another um, bullet right below it and I'll go uh, this is my second point and then I hit enter and it creates another bullet okay and uh, this is my third and final point okay and you go okay I just want three bullets and you hit enter and it creates a fourth one you go well now what it created a fourth one if you hit enter twice in a row it eliminates that last one okay it leaves an empty empty paragraph behind I'm not sure if it does that in Windows but that's easy to deal with you just hit return there and da -da, it just eliminated that that extra um, point uh, that extra billet sorry that extra empty paragraph right there okay and there you go you've got three bullets okay so basically you know just uh, uh, hit the um, bullet create bullets and um, chances are that the uh, paragraph formatting that you have for your deep set for your default that's not what you want you could just do that clear direct formatting and then you know just one bullet after another one bullet after another okay and uh, there you go all right um, what now okay so that's pretty easy you know just practice it a little bit you, you should be fine okay uh, the other thing you tend to want to do in a paper okay especially if it's a sign scientific or biology paper or, is you want a table of some kind so you want to create a table and uh, you could do that through the table insert table menu all right or you can just use this button right here okay so we'll we'll, we'll do a table uh, I don't know where are we going to put a table let's put a table yeah I'll just put a table right there okay so I just created an empty paragraph right there and we'll create a table and you say well how do I do that so up here there's uh, this button right there and it's got uh, it looks like a little table and um, if you click on it it actually shows you a bunch of um, uh, different table sizes okay now you probably can't see that again because of the limitations of the recording software but I'm just gonna do um, I don't know I'm gonna do a um, four by three table okay and there it is all right so I just went to this item here and I chose a four by three there was a, an item for a four by three and I chose it and there it is okay so there's my um, my table and it kind of looks ugly because it's right up against that so you know what I'm gonna I am gonna put a an empty paragraph in there like that okay and there's my table now um, let me put some some numbers in this table so you know you type a number like that and then you hit tab and you go into the next one and then like no, I'm just going to put in a bunch of numbers here. So every time I hit tab, I'm going into the next cell of the table. Oops, I, I don't know. It doesn't matter. I put two sixes in there. Like that. Okay. And kind of looks funny with those paragraph uh, uh, symbols there. So let's turn them off for a second. And there you go. There's your table. Now you look at this and you go, well, that looks really ugly because... Uh, you know the numbers are uh, they're left justified you say well I don't want them left justified them. I want them in the middle of the cell so you can highlight the whole table by just dragging over like that and then these buttons up here are your justification buttons okay uh, by the way let me turn on the um, the paragraphs again notice that each cell is its own paragraph okay so you can apply paragraph level formatting to each cell all right so um, I'm gonna highlight all my cells and I'm gonna say I want all my cells to be center justified okay and that's a paragraph level uh, formatting all right it's the same formatting that I use for that that header up above here um, sorry I keep saying header I meant heading okay that heading right there which was center justified okay so uh, there we go there's the the table and then you say well it still kind of looks ugly because you know the cells are way too wide Okay, so what you could do is you can actually resize the, the, the cells by just putting your cursor at the end and grabbing the end and then you can bring in the the sizes of the each cell like that and can make them whatever size you like. Okay, and uh, so my table is a little bit skewed to the uh, uh, to the right there, but you know, like I can like, fix that for you to show you how you do that. Like that. Like that. All right. 
and you know fooling around a little bit you can you can get it to be whatever size you want. The e each row and each column does not have to be the, the same size. Okay, so there I was changing the column sizes. You can also change the row sizes. Okay, like that if you want to. All right, that looks a little ugly, so I'll change it back. Okay, there you go. Okay, uh, now what? Well, um, um, and this is going to be important when we get to spreadsheets. There's a difference between deleting the contents of a cell and deleting the cell itself okay so what do i mean by cell so like this this right here that six is inside of a cell okay and uh, this seven over here that's also inside of a cell okay if i put my cursor in a cell here like this and i just hit delete all i did was i deleted the contents of that cell but that cell is still there okay and even if i highlight an entire row like that and i hit delete all it does is it deletes the contents of that row. That that row is still there, even though it's empty. Okay, even though this row is still empty, that row is still there. And you go, no, I actually want to delete that row. I want that row to go away so that the one, two, three, four is directly on top of the eight, nine, zero, and one. Okay, you can't do that with the delete key. The delete key, all it does is it simply deletes the contents of the cell. It doesn't actually delete a cell. And you say, well, how do I actually delete a cell? Well, what you could do is uh, you could put your cursor anywhere inside that cell, or you could just highlight uh, the row that you want to delete like that. And then you actually have to go to the um, tables menu up here and go delete row or delete column. And if I go there, and again, you won't see this, but I'm going there and I'm going to go delete, um, delete, and I'm going to choose delete row and boom. What just happened was that row was deleted. So um, you cannot delete a row with the delete key. The delete key will only delete the contents of a cell. It won't actually delete cells. If you actually want to delete cells, you have to go through the table menu. Okay, you have to go uh, tools, delete row, or you can also do tools, delete column. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cursor right there where that two is. And I'm going to say, I want to delete that entire column. I want to delete that entire column. And so I can go uh, table, delete. And now I'm not choosing row, I'm choosing column. And boom, what did it do? It just deleted that entire column that had a two in it. Okay. Uh, finally, you might say, well, now I want to add a, a row. Okay. I want to add a row between like that one and that eight there. Well, you could put, you know, your cursor where that one is. And then you could say, insert a row after the row that that one is in. Okay, and again, you can't see this, but I'm just going to table, insert row below, and da da, it inserted a row below. Alternatively, you could say insert row above, and you go insert row above, and da da, now I have a row above that one. Okay, and so by, by all these different uh, techniques, you can just make your table look uh, however you want it to look. Okay. There's a lot of style to tables. Um, uh, if you want to see them all, uh, you know, go to the table and look at all the different menu items that you have for tables. Okay. Uh, like there are different color tables. There's uh, tables without a border, tables with a border. Usually you want a table with a border, but you, you don't have to have a border on your table. Okay. Like uh, if you wanted to do a, like a, a calendar, like a month in a calendar, usually the months in the calendar, they, they, I don't know if usually, but sometimes they don't have like a, uh, a border around them. So that's a possibility too. Okay. So there you go. That's how you uh, uh, will make uh, a table. Okay. Now, uh, what about other more esoteric things like specialized things? Okay. So that's what we're going to go through for the rest of this. Uh, uh, one of the specialized things that you could do is insert specialized characters. OK, and you say, well, what's a specialized character? Well, things like Greek symbols or, you know, the copyright symbol, which is the C with the little circle around it. And you go, where? where how do I do that? And I don't see that copyright symbol on my keyboard. OK, or, or I want to insert like a Greek symbol. OK, I don't see the Greek symbol on my like a, the Omega. All right. I want to insert an Omega. And you go, well, I don't see that anywhere. OK, so um, let me show you how to do that. Um, I don't know. Where am I going to insert my Omega? Let me insert my Omega right here after this, uh, after the word point there. So I'm going to insert an Omega there. OK, so um, there's uh, in addition to the format, there's also this insert. OK, and there's a lot of different things you can insert. OK, so I'm going to go to insert and insert special character. OK, and what happens is is you can't see it but you will in a minute 
this window pops up right here. And you go, well, what's this window here? Okay, this window has a bunch of special characters. It has like regular letters, but it has a special characters too. And actually, there's the copyright symbol right there. Okay, uh, let me make that a little bit bigger for you. There's the copyright symbol right there. But you know, you say, well, you know what? I, I don't want the copyright symbol. I want a Greek letter. Okay. And so here, the subset is basic Latin. Okay. Like our alphabet is the Latin alphabet. Uh, but you know what? I, I'm going to switch to uh, the Greek. So let's see here. There should be basic Greek. There it is. So there's the basic Greek alphabet. And you take a look at, and you're not going to find any of these symbols on your keyboard. Okay. And uh, I don't know. Let's do the uh, um, capital omega. That's the symbol right here. Okay, this is lowercase omega. We'll do the capital omega. So you just click on that. Okay, and then down here you say insert, and wherever your cursor was, it gets inserted. Okay, and let me switch back, and you'll be able to see it now. And uh, there it is, right here. See, right there. Whoops, uh, I made a mistake. I actually made my window way too big. Let me just resize that for you. There we go. Okay, there's that omega right there. Okay, that symbol that we just inserted. All right, so now uh, a special little uh, esoteric feature. Not something that you use every day, but it's important to know. Okay, now uh, next thing is uh, footers and headers. Okay, so what's a footer and a header? So um, sometimes like um, maybe like something like a resume, uh, which is several pages long. At the bottom of every page, you want the exact same thing written down. Okay, so maybe like at the very bottom of every page, you want your name and maybe a page number. Okay, so you say, well, how do you do that? What you do is you simply insert a header, which is the top of a page, and a footer, which is at the bottom of the page. This is like a uh, uh, little one line of text that you can either insert at the very top of every page or at the bottom of every page. Okay, and it's identical on every page. Okay, and uh, so a minute ago I, I, I call I said head header I meant heading these are called footers and headers footers and headers okay so let me show you how to insert a um, uh, a footer okay so let's go back here and uh, you know if we go to the bottom of um, our pages let me click off of uh, uh, yeah, there we go okay you go to the bottom of a page here like that so this is the very bottom of the page. And you'll notice that you know it's blank okay and you know there are two pages to this text so here's the bottom of the other page and it's also blank and you go well you know what i want my name at the bottom of these pages okay and maybe my name and maybe like a, a page number okay so um uh, under the insert here right up here you can go insert and uh somewhere in here it should say Uh, footers and headers. There it is. So I'm going to insert a uh, footer. All right. And uh, now you can barely see what happened, but there's like this extra little margins, a couple of margins here. And the footer is basically between these like little margin uh, markers right there. Okay. So there where my cursor is back and forth, that is the footer. And so in there, I'm just going to put my name, Anthony G. Basile, something like that. Okay. And you say, well, okay, big deal. Well, the big deal is, is that every single page will now have that at the very bottom, okay? So this was my first page and you could see it there at the very bottom. There is the second page and you could see it there at the very bottom. If there's a third page, it'll have the exact same footer over and over and over and over again, okay? So that's the purpose of a footer. And it basically means that it's the same text, usually one line of text, which is, the, you know, the same at the bottom of every single um, a page okay uh, it's also where you want to put page numbers all right so you say okay great you know what uh, here we go here we are on the first page how about I you know just tab to the middle here and put page one right there because that's page one okay the problem with doing that with putting a page number by typing page like a one for page one like that yeah we are on page one and there it is one but what did I say a minute ago every single footer is going to look the same so page one has a one there Page two also has a one. If we had a third page, it would also have a one. And the fourth page, we would also have a one. They say, well, you know what? I'm going to change this because that's actually page two. So I should change that to a two, except that now you've changed it on every single page. And you go, well, that, that kind of defeats the purpose. How can you get a page number in a footer? Okay. And the answer is you don't type it in. You make use of a field. 
Okay. Now we're going to see fields when we get to databases later, but right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the insert menu and I'm going to go insert field. And again, you can't see me doing this, but I'm going to go insert field and I'm going to choose page number. So I went to insert field page number and there's a one there. Now this one has a little gray outline around it like that. If you were to print this out, it, that one, that gray outline would not appear around the one. Okay. But um, because I inserted the page number as a field on page one, that's a one. Okay. On page two, it's a two. On page three, it's a three and so on. Okay. And so if you want to page, put a page number in uh, the footer, don't use like don't type in the page number because again that's repeated in every single uh, text what you want to do is you want to put a field in there so this is a new concept a field is basically a place where the word processor is going to decide what to put in there and we said in this field put the page number okay there's other things you could put in a field there are fields for other things too there are fields like for dates and things like that. And I'll show you later that you can have fields which pull out of databases. Okay, and when we get to databases, I'll show you that. But right now, all I'm saying is that in the footer, in this spot right here, okay, right there, put the page number, okay? And so if there were a third page, it would be page three and so on, okay? So uh, <clears throat> uh, just to sort of summarize, um, a, a footer is uh, basically, the one line at the bottom, excuse me, one bottom, one line at the bottom of the text, and it's identical in every single page. A header is the same thing, but at the top of the uh, of the of the text, okay. And sometimes you want a footer, sometimes you want headers. It depends, okay. Like on a resume, you might want, I don't know, maybe you want a, a footer, but you could see you using a header too, okay. Now, if you want to put a page number in the footer or the header, you don't want to type it. You want to make use of a field. Okay, and again, a field is an area of text where the word processor will automatically fill it in. Okay, and if you say fill it in with the page number, it'll fill it in with the page number. But later, we can have it fill it in with some data that comes out of a database. Okay, and to get at those fields, you just go insert field, and then it'll give you a bunch of different fields that you can um, choose from. And uh, there's sort of a certain stock number, but if there's a database attached, then it'll give you the extra fields, all the fields that come out of the database. Okay. All right. Um, so what's next? Uh, oh yes, page breaks. So another thing that students tend to do is because they might need to go to the, uh, like they may need a, a heading to be at the top of the next uh, page. What they'll do is they'll hit a bunch of returns and then create a heading at the top of the next page. And I'll show you why that's a problem. Okay, so let's go back here. And uh, so this text is a bit big. Let me, let me shrink it down just so you could see. Um, I'm just doing a zoom here, okay? So you can see here what I have is uh, basically two pages like this, okay? And uh, uh, after this uh, says, um, uh, sorry, over here where I have the heading, suppose, suppose that I want this heading here to always be at the top of the next page, okay? One thing that students might do is something like this. They'll hit return, 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 return again, and now, the heading is at the top of this other page here like that, okay? The problem with this is that if I create another paragraph here, okay, so I decide uh, I'm going to insert another paragraph, you can already see what happened. This heading here was pushed down. As soon as I inserted this, this paragraph right here, it pushed everything down, okay? And you can actually see that at the very top of that page there, there's an empty paragraph. And you go, well, that's terrible. Well, what if I inserted yet another paragraph? Okay, so I'm here and I go, this is yet another paragraph. Okay, well, now it pushed this one down even more because every time you insert a paragraph, it pushes everything down. And you say, well, I don't want it to do that. Okay, so what you'll wind up doing is you'll wind up going here and then removing these empty paragraphs. And then, you know, as you go as you keep adding and removing tests, you're adding and removing paragraphs to get everything aligned such that this heading here, this is a heading, is always at the top of a page. That's not the way to do this, okay? Let me get rid of these paragraphs here. Okay, these extra paragraphs, okay? So uh, this is where we were. This is where we were. And we say, you know what? I always want this heading to be at the top of another page. The way you do that is right before the T there, you put your cursor right before the T like that. And you insert, again, you can't see my cursor, but it's right there in front of the T. 
Okay. Uh, what you do is you insert what's called a page break. Okay. And a page break is usually indicated by a, a, a a blue line, dash blue line at the bottom here, okay, between the between pages. So right now there isn't a page break, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to my um, uh, to my insert menu here, and I'm going to go insert, and then I'm going to choose page break. Okay, there are different types of breaks, by the way, but uh, you know what we want right now is a page break. Okay, so watch what happens. Insert, okay, and page break, and. Ta -da. you'll notice that the heading is up here and I have the show hidden characters on you'll notice there's no paragraph there's no uh, paragraph um, a empty paragraph before that okay now you might say well that's ugly because it's got an, a, a half inch there we can fix that in just a minute okay uh, but but there it is and if you go to the bottom of the page here okay actually in this view it doesn't show it but um, let me switch back to let me switch back to the this view here like this OK, so, you know, uh, there's the, the beginning of the document and we go to the very bottom here and take a look right along between these two pages. You see how there's just that uh, that dash line there, that blue dash line. That means there's a page break right there. OK, that's how you know that these page breaks are there. And then there's the heading right there. OK, now what? what what's what's so nice about this? Well, um, over here, let me get rid of that empty paragraph. Uh, suppose I put in a bunch of paragraphs right there. So uh, I inserted a paragraph, okay, and then I'm going to hit, notice there's no paragraphs between, like after that one on that page there, okay, all right, and then all the way until you get to there, and then I'm going to insert another paragraph, okay, so this is yet another inserted paragraph like that, okay, and you'll see that there's no paragraphs in there, and look at that, the heading didn't move at all. Okay. The reason the heading didn't move at all is because it comes right after the page break. And so it doesn't matter how many paragraphs I insert here. Yet another. Whoops. More. 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 Okay. What happened was is that as I kept typing, I actually went into another page. There's no page break there. And you go, where's the heading? There's the page break. And there's the heading. The heading this is a heading is always going to be immediately after the page break. OK, and so these page breaks are great because they will guarantee that whatever comes right after that page break is always at the top of the next page. All right. And that's a lot better than you adding empty paragraphs and removing empty, empty paragraphs to try to get everything formatted, you know, vertically uh, correctly. OK, uh, last thing I'm going to do is you see how there's that extra half inch. That's a residue from before. Uh, I'm going to go back to my format paragraph in here. You won't see me do this, but I'm going back to the format paragraph. Oops, and I didn't put my cursor in the right place. Let me put my cursor in the right place. So my cursor is basically inside the paragraph. It's inside the blue um, highlighting there. Okay, I'll put it inside the blue highlighting. And I go format paragraph. And I'm going to remove that half inch above like that. And how does that look? A little bit better. Okay, there you go. All right. And uh, if I zoom out to the... What I had before, and uh, there you go. And this is what the paper looks like now. Here's my first page, okay. And there's those all those empty paragraphs I put in there like that. And uh, uh, um, whoops, where am I here? Okay. Uh, and then uh, uh, there's the the empty the the two extra paragraphs I put at the top of the next page. And then the rest of that page is empty until we get to the page break. And uh, you can barely see, but there's a blue dash line there. There's the page break. And then this is a heading is always immediately after that uh, page break. OK. All right. Um, what's next? Well, last thing is footnotes and endnotes. OK, so we've got a lot of foots and heads. So let's let's get this clear. A heading is just like what I had there, like a heading, like a title heading. OK, a footer and a header are basically a line of text at the top and at the bottom of the page. A footnote or an end note is an extra little note that you put in a page usually when you want to reference something. Okay, So a footnote is basically a reference 
that you might put like you you know you quote someone and then you want to say well here's the text I got it from you put a little one into the text and then at the bottom of the page you also have that one and and you say there I got this from you know such and such an author okay if the note is at the bottom of the page that's called a foot note if the note is at the end of the text that's called an end note okay so don't a lot of students will confuse foot notes and end notes from footers and headers don't confuse the two you'll know the difference because a foot note or an end note is a note it's basically an annotation added to the text okay and so let me show you how that works okay switching back to here uh, let's go back to our very first page and let's switch the view again so that you could see what's going on okay so this was my very first page and let me scroll right down to the very bottom of the page okay uh, there's the footer okay and there's the page number in the footer and now I want to end a foot I want to add a foot note okay and so like you can add a footnote anywhere okay so let, let's say right after the first word Spain okay or, or maybe better yet like after the first sentence the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. And I could say, well, this is a famous quote. Okay, but I don't want to write that here. I don't want to put that in there. I want to put it in a note at the bottom of the page. So I put my cursor right after the uh, plain. And then, again, you won't see me doing this, but under insert, I'm going to go to notes and I'm going to choose footnote. Okay, so I'm going to go insert footnote like that. And you'll notice that what it did is it just went right to the bottom of the page and there's a one there and over here I'm gonna just type uh, this is a famous a line from somewhere I don't even know where I got it but the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane okay so there's that one and there's my footnote notice this is the footnote here and this is the footer Okay, so the footer is at the bottom of every page, and it's the same on every page, as we said. The footnote is at the bottom of the first page. It's not there on the second page. Okay, it's not there at the bottom of the third page. Okay, and I guess we've got a fourth page now, right? It's not there at the bottom of the fourth page either. Okay, it's only at the bottom of the first page, the, the page in which I inserted the note. And if you look here at the very top, that's where I inserted the note. So it says the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane, period. And then there's a one. And it's inside one of those gray boxes, which means it's a field that was added. Okay. And at the very bottom of the page is the reference. Okay. For that note. All right. You can actually jump back and forth by just putting your cursor over top of that one and you click. And it brings you to the top. And if you're here at the top and you put your cursor right on top of that one and you click, it brings you to the bottom of the page where the, the footnote is actually inserted. Okay. And so there you go. Now, what if you insert a second note? Let's insert a second note over here. Maybe uh, like after the second one. Okay. Like that. All right. So I'm going to put my cursor right after the this word plane here like that. And I'm going to go insert all right and i'm going to go insert a footnote like that and i've inserted a, I'm, I'm ready to type in the text for my second footnote okay so this is the second footnote i've added okay and if i click there i go back to the second one all right so where are these two notes Let's see if i can get them both in there uh sorry let me there we go. There's the first one I put in. There's the second one I put in. Okay. So these are the anchors to the notes. And if you go to the bottom, that's where the notes are actually inserted. Okay. Like that. All right. Now you could try to do this manually, but I wouldn't recommend that you do because if you were to insert a note between one and two, what you're supposed to do is renumber them. So suppose I want to insert a note right here, right after that word rain. Well, this one right now is note number one. This one is note number two over here where my cursor is. And so if I insert that, that note in the middle, I need to renumber things, okay? Because the notes are supposed to go, the anchors for these notes are supposed to go in order. So this is supposed to be number one. The one after rain is supposed to be number two. And this one, which is currently number two, should be renumbered to number three, okay? 
And if you have a bunch of notes, that could be really annoying because what you would have to do is you'd have to go and you'd have to like renumber. Like if I insert number two here, then I have to go to number two and renumber it as number three. Then I would have to go to number three, the old number three, and renumber it as the new number four. And then I go to the old number four and renumber it as new number four, and then so on and so forth. And you can see that that's a pain. But guess what? If you let the computers computer do all the um, the inserting, it'll just renumber things for you. So right now we have number one here and number two there. But if I insert a note after rain, that one's going to become the new number two. And this old number two will become number three. Okay, so let me do that. So I'm just going to go insert uh, footnote. And I'm going to go, this is the third note I inserted, but it is number two. And I'll put a bunch of exclamation points there because you can see what just happened here. Okay, so uh, this is my second footnote was the one that I inserted a minute ago and it was number two, but now it's become number three because everything got renumbered. And so if we go back up to the top here, you could see that this was number one. This used to be number two, but now it's not. Now it's number three. It's a little hard to see, but it is a number three. And this one, which I inserted, that's the new number two. Okay, so to avoid any kind of like all this pain about renumbering your your footnotes and all that, let the computer do it. Don't try to insert footnotes manually. Let the computer insert the footnotes by doing the insert footnote, um, uh, using the insert footnote menu, and then it'll automatically renumber things for you. Okay, and uh, there it is. All right. Uh, finally, um, you know, what's the difference between a footnote or an endnote? Let me insert an endnote and you'll see. Uh, maybe I'll insert it right here after I inserted this paragraph here. I'm just going to go insert and now I'm going to go to insert endnote and I'm going to go, this is an endnote. This is an endnote. It is inserted at the very end of the entire document. So whereas footnotes are placed at the bottom of, a, of the page with the anchor, uh, the um, endnotes are put at the very end of the document. Now you can't see that right now, but let me just switch to my um, you know smaller view here. And you could see, you know, <clears throat> here was my page one. Okay, here's my page two. Here's page three. Here's page four. So page four actually has just one empty paragraph in it. Let me show you. Like right there. Okay, the one empty paragraph. We can get rid of page four by just deleting that empty paragraph. Okay. All right. And now we'll see, you know, here's page one. Again, here's page two. Here's page three. And the very last page. That's where that endnote is. Okay, so endnotes go to get put on a page which is at the very end of the document. No matter where the, no matter where in the document you insert an endnote, the actual note associated with the anchor is at the very end of the uh, document. Okay, and footnotes, footnotes are always. So here's where I had my footnotes. Footnotes are always at the bottom of the page, where. The, uh, the footnotes were inserted, okay? So if I insert a footnote here on page three, let's just insert one there, okay? So I'm just gonna go insert, uh, insert, insert uh, footnote like this. And uh, this, oops, this is a foot footnote on a different page. It's still number four, very hard to see. It's still number four, but now, you know, it's basically in this, um, uh, on that page right there. Okay, it's right right in there. Uh, I did something weird. What did I do? I think I hit, oh, I know what I did. I hit a, there we go. That fixes it. I hit a, I hit a return by accident. Okay, so, so here was my, uh, this is the heading. Okay, that was page three. And I inserted a footnote right there. So right there. Okay. And that footnote is footnote number four. And it's at the bottom of the page. So footnotes number one, two, and three are on page one. There's no footnote on page two. And then on page three, there's footnote number four. And you can see that footnote number four is at the bottom of page three there like that. Okay. So footnotes are always at the bottom of the page in which you inserted them. Okay. So um, why would you need one or the other? Depends on um, 
you know your your style like APA will have one requirement uh, MLA will have another and so on okay well um, I think that's enough um, word processors have a lot more to them uh, but I think you know especially the paragraph level formatting will help you uh, make sure that your uh, documents look professional okay and then you can send them uh, either bind them as theses or send them to journals for publications or uh, whatever okay all right I'll uh, we'll see you in the next lecture bye bye